name is Dr. John Belkowitz. Fiji water at 40 degrees. And I'm Whitney Belkowitz. And we're from Intelligent Concrete. We're going to talk about the handheld penetrometer today. That's my favorite. So what we are talking Martin, about so today is a continuing discussion that we had with the team talk that we did earlier, Movie Magic, on ASTMC 1709 Alternative Supplementary Cementitious Materials. So Whitney and I have been working with um, C1709 for a while now. Mm -hmm. It's a newer standard that has right. come out uh, to uh, answer the call for uh, materials that don't normally meet ASTMC 618, 989, or 1240, which is that standard or what we're used to supplementary cementitious material, where we're right. talking about slag, ash, thank you. Slag, ash, or silica fume. And there's a section that I wanted to read. Okay. Performing the tests or meeting the test limits in this guide should not imply that the material that the material tested meets the requirements of the specification C16A18, 989, or 1240. That being said, if an ASCM, oh, should I read the whole thing? Whatever you like. An ASCM does not yet have a significant record, performance in concrete, a comprehensive evaluation based on this guide should be undertaken, and it should be recognized that this. ASCM might be introduced for a specific project or into a limited market to initially demonstrate its performance. The last thing that I want to read, and I do love reading, you do, is an ASCM that demonstrates, this is the most important part, right? So this is from the 1709-18, an ASCM that demonstrates good performance through a comprehensive evaluation as outlined in this guide could then be considered to have access to broader markets and could be considered for inclusion in an ASTM standard for SCM. Right. That's the most important. Absolutely. Because even if it's not meeting the specifications, the 618, the, the 989, specs, or the 1240, it can still be considered for that based on performance. And the reason I like that. You know, there's all these flashes that are currently meeting the specs. Here. Here's a good picture of what Whitney's talking about. Ding! Um, but there's plenty that meet the spec for the 618, and just the variability in what's allowed is unbelievable. So, unbelievable. if you're able to have a manufactured material that can still provide the features and benefits of a fly ash, and you have a, you know, repeatable product, something that you can rely on, the quality, Consistent. the consistency. Oh, why not? And the picture that we just showed is a fly ash from the same class F fly ash from the same distributor mm -hmm. delivered at two different times mm -hmm. in the week. And you should see I know. there's a drastic difference between the colors. One's almost black, the other one is light, light gray. And so it's just. That darker color is indicative of a higher carbon content, which will unfortunately monopolize admixtures, water require a lot more of those to give you your fresh properties and then oftentimes lead to well, it's gonna a reduction Well, it's going to decrease in strength. Right. right. And Absolutely. a decrease in durability. Right. So what we're doing today, the impetus of all of this, is uh, we're going to be doing some mixes here. One of the new members of our team is going to be joining me today. Ooh. Air high five. What? Um, and we are going to be doing 2,000 pound mixes uh, times three. No. Not true. It's a lie. But this is the mix that we're going to be using. It's a standard grout mix that we're going to be doing. We don't have the sand in here. But what I wanted to show you is that we are doing total cement type 1, 2 Portland cement from Wholesome, or Lafarge Wholesome now, with a replacement with our ASCM, our alternative supplementary cementitious material. That is a mouthful. So we have our total cementitious, which is going to be 517 pounds per cubic yard using um, our ASCM, and in this case we're using Juno XP by Surface Tech, we're going to use 5% replacement. Now we're going to keep the cementitious constant. Normally with Juno, you're going to see somewhere around a 15% increase on your strength, while the water demand is, is fairly low. You actually need to use less water in your Juno mix. Mm -hmm anywhere between 3 and 5% less water to get the same slump. We've got a 70% purity in our pozzolanic, and we also have a mineral component, 
And that's, I think, the important part to recognize about the 1709, where I believe the 1709 was created for materials you said are um, not like the flashes with the inconsistencies, but also uh, outside of the proverbial box of what we've been doing. There are some technologies, and you said it best, that have been lost in university basements sure. that are not like the fly ashes, the silver right. fumes, the slag, but still offer some amazing right. uh, properties to the concrete. And that's sure. what we're going to see here. So what we're focusing on today with Brooke is mixing the, or putting that grout mixture together without the Juno XP and with the Juno XP. And the test that we're going to look at today is going to be um, our fresh properties, our slump, sure. and our unit weight. Um, and then next week we're going to be looking at the seven day strengths. Sure. Three cylinders, seven day strength, cured in our awesome environment. And um, yeah, so for that 5%, we'd use about 25 pounds per cubic yard of the Juno, but ultimately, or the Juno XP, but ultimately with that strength increase at 7 to 28 days, we could yank back our total cementitious, still keep our fresh properties, our great concrete coming down the street and then increasing our durability. So, thank you for joining us today. We're gonna to run this mix, do unit weight, temp, slump, and then we're gonna run three cylinders on it, and next week we'll come back with a third and final video uh, with strength. Right. Cool? Yes. Thanks for your time. You got any concrete questions, concrete concerns? Put them below. Go concrete! Eat asphalt. Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today